uh, bringing together the things we love with amazing people and the core, the soul, the heart and soul of Contravania is back together after months and months and months on hiatus. Uh, we've, we've traveled the deserts. We've gone to the Antarctic. Uh, we have searched our souls, but the band has reunited and we're about to produce our, <laughs> our white album right here. Um, <laughs> But let's get into some quick introductions. On the bottom part of the screen, you have Rat Boy Collectibles in the glowing green light. How's it going, Debbie? Going pretty good, my friend. How's Thank life? Much. How's life? What going you up good, to? Just uh, taking care of a chaotic one-year-old. <laughs> it's pretty pretty crazy in, its, in and of itself. Ooh. <laughs> I'm Devin, and I have one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're mine one... bites me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be a vampire. I don't know. Well, <laughs> bite it back. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and once again, you see how great I am with infants. I re- I say it when <laughs> it's like <laughs> you you have you you know you you don't become a person to me until you're two. Um, at the very <laughs> least, you were you were still on like cat dog level in my opinion. <laughs> oh Take my that, Willow. <laughs> Take it off. That's right. I'm insulting a baby. All right, yeah. it's gonna be a good show. She's uh, okay. <laughs> she, yeah, she can, she can take it. She, from what I hear, she bites hard. Um, She's tough. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but and returning. The man who's 28 and 3 in my heart. Man who's always there from Massachusetts. <laughs> 8-bit glitch, 79. What up, buddy? How's it going? Oh, it's going great. Uh, chaotic 2022 for sure for me. Uh, as you said, I, you know, everybody says the pandemic years, the 2020, the 2021 was tough. For me, it wasn't. This year seems to be the toughest. Yeah, you're working. You're like both at home and in person. Yeah, when yeah. you tell me of stuff going on with your job, I'm just like, I feel bad for him. <laughs> yeah, like I, I want to like come to Massachusetts and hug you. Like four oh, days, come on. Of, four days out of the week. Yeah, uh, but good, good. Hey, let me ask you. You know. We're, we'll talk pickups in a little bit, but I want to talk about a major pickup. Have you got your wood pellets for your wood burning stove? Are you going to be warm this winter? <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. they've been ordered. They have not been delivered yet. Oh God, I hope you're not getting yeah. pellets from like limited run games, like one year. Later. <laughs> <laughs> I got the special edition, so you know it comes with Wo- Woody the Wood statue, and it's been delayed. So you know. <laughs> And I ordered I ordered my pellets with my 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 summer stuff. So you know I gotta wait till the summer stuff comes in. You know because they can't send both at the same time. You know separately because I made the order at the same time. You know how it yeah. goes. I love limited run, but it's sad how true that is. Oh my god, people would die if limited run was in charge of like serious shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, heart transplants. Yeah, my... you'll get it next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, mean, you ordered you ordered your liver with the heart, so we gotta wait till the liver comes in. Then we'll send you the heart and the liver. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. But yeah, and of course, I'm doing well. I'm just reflecting on we talking a little bit before the show, reflecting on how different things were. If you de- like, if you're subscribed to this channel, like you noticed, this was going for a while. And then it stopped. And if you've noticed, my video output has been very minuscule this year. Uh, and that's just because life, life lifed and got uh, a little bit crazy. Uh, reflecting on where I was like a year ago, or a little more than a year ago, I was, had just started a part-time job. And it was just me and my wife. Flash forward to a year now, I'm... Now working a full-time job as a provisional elder in the United Methodist Church. I'm an associate pastor at a big church, crazy church. Uh, but I don't want to say too much about that because this is my heathen space. This is where I get to like do stuff like cuss like I just did a second ago. Shh, don't tell anybody. Devin? <laughs> I'm looking at you, Devin. I know you. Lo- loose lips sink ships and ruin jobs. 
Uh, <laughs> but then on top of that, like I have three kids now. Uh, my wife and I are fostering, and we first were fostering a twelve-year-old who's now thirteen, and then his four-year-old brother came to be with us, and now their seven-year-old sister has come to be with us. It's just a whirlwind, and so YouTube has kind of taken a back seat. But I'm trying to get back to it, trying to get some me time, really cleanse the soul. You know, this is my eat, pray, love time. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is something fun to do, and I have missed talking to these guys, and I've missed hearing different comments from people. Um, we got an episode up last week, and it was really good to just see some people checking in. Um, especially Tom. You know, I, I never really get to talk from with Tom from Do You Nerd. On a regular basis, ever. Uh, but, I digress. Let's get into a little chit-chat. Let's talk about a smidge of news. Just a smidgey smidge. Uh, to, is it, Devin, you would know this. Is it tomorrow or Thursday? That, Whatever the 6th is. I think that's Thursday. We're gonna say yeah, today's Thursday. the 4th. Alright, so, so today's yeah. the thir- 4th. So, uh, yeah, two days. Uh, but Nintendo has dropped. They're going to have a Nintendo Direct. It is in line with New York Comic Con, which is going to uh, be the reveal of the Super Mario Brothers trailer. And they have released a one shot or one sheet, uh, kind of their uh, teaser poster. And Devin, t- you you had some feelings about this. You were, you shared this with me when you first saw it on Twitter. How you feeling about that poster? Well, before I saw that poster personally, I was scared that they were going to have some weird, like, stylized look to it, kind of like the other Illumination movies do, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to, like, humanoid figures. I was kind of scared of that, even though I was still optimistic that it was going to be decent because Nintendo actually has a hold on uh, what's going on with it. But now that I saw the poster, I'm way more on board than I thought I was going to be because it looks really good. Yeah. Okay. And that's and very re- accurate to the actual names. Yeah, and that's really r- rare for you to be on board with something Nintendo's doing. Mm, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Sean, would it, have you seen it? What are your thoughts? I've, I've actually only seen it like just now. Like, yeah, I shared it. Like, I, half hour before. Yeah, I, I, I've been like, so busy with work today. I haven't like, checked social media or anything today. Um, so I'm. this is a surprise to me. So this is my first like 30-minute... like take of it so i mean right off the bat it, it looks promising it looks great um i mean we, we're only seeing mario's back i mean he could turn around and we could have a whole sonic like original sonic uh, situation on our hands when we see his face <laughs> who knows uh, <laughs> that just looks we don't know like yet. they just pasted chris pratt's face right on <laughs> yeah uh, but i mean i mean the the way it looks, it looks great. I mean, it looks yeah. like a game to me. Yeah. It looks, you know, like right out of a video game. So I think it's promising. The voices is the thing that's going to sell it for me. If they can, if I can, if the voices are, can take me out of reality kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not picturing the actors, but I'm picturing the characters, you know, when they're yeah. talking. Because that can ruin or make a, a for me, an animated movie um, that way. So. But as visually, so far, the little I've seen, looked at it and stuff, I, I'm thinking it's going to be good, yeah. based just based on that. But yeah. all right, so I'm going to be the old guy yelling at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> what the clouds look great? I mean, what's wrong with the clouds? No. <laughs> they don't have faces like in oh, the game. There you go. <laughs> now, uh, I I don't know. I Mario is starting to feel. Um, to me, personally, and this starts with Super Mario, the new Super Mario Brothers game. So, new Super Mario Brothers, new Super Mario Brothers Wii, new Super Mario Brothers Two, uh, Super Mario 3D World. Odyssey kind of broke it up, but I feel like Nintendo has codified Mario too much, um, and it looks you're like it looks a lot like the imagery from Super Mario World. And I have been bored with Super Mario since the new Super Mario games came out. Super Mario Brothers games came out. In that they don't feel like they experiment or take chances with this character anymore. Like, you know what you're going to get. Like, um, and you just have this set stock thing that you have to do. Um, you know, compared to, like, the company, like, Flashback 
to 30 years ago. Like, new, you know, Super Mario Brothers, awesome game. The second one in Japan is very much, like, extra content, essentially. But they're like, okay, we got to do something a little bit different for the American audience. They took a chance. We could debate all day whether or not it was a successful chance, but it, it, you know, it was a very different style game, and it had a different look and a different feel. And even Super Mario Brothers 3 had a different look, had a different feel. Uh, Super Mario Brother World and, you know, Yoshi's Island. And and since then, it just felt like it's been very clear, like, we have to do these things. These are the Mario things. And even to the point, like, with Paper Mario, um, the Origami King, like, they were very strict on what they would let those studios do and add and what they could touch. And so I look at this and I'm weird. I'm really weird right here and I fully admit it, but it makes me miss Bob Hoskins and Jay like, or John Leguizamo. Uh, <laughs> because that movie, like that movie's bad. That movie's bad. I, I, I fully but admit it's good. Bad. It's so good. Bad. And it, it's like, okay, we got this kid's game. It's bright and colorful. Let's make a dystopian movie out of it. Let's throw some, <laughs> let's throw some like just weird apocalyptic stuff in there. And some ray guns about evolution and dinosaurs. Like, and I just, like, I look at this image and I, and I do want to say, I will be there day one. I will be excited and I want this thing to be good. But I, I look at it and I'm going to... I know what I'm going to get here. Princess is going to get kidnapped. Mario's going to go save beat Bowser. And it's going to be a very, very clear, like what the aesthetic is. And they're like, and so to so your, you know what you said, Devin, like I really wish they had stylized it. I wish it looked a little bit different because now it has to look like this. Cause also they have to look like the theme park. Um, well, yeah, I definitely do get the, the, the theme park vibes from it 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, well, yeah. I mean... Just the way everything's set up in this little town square or something that it looks like. I will say, I will appreciate if somehow they work a Super Mario Brothers movie reference into this. If they do something just to, like, do a little nod to the original movie, I will <laughs> I will, t- I will tip my bandana. Um, but that's what I was kind of thinking, that they were going to make, like, a little bit of a meta joke to the fact that how many times Mario has saved the princess and Toad was like, she's in the next castle. And we all know what he was doing for like 30 years now. I was hoping and think that they're probably going to add like a little meta joke on how that's happened so many times into the movie and just kind of play it into it. Uh, Do you you not think this will be an origin story? I feel like it is, but I feel like that's going to be kind of part of it on the how many times he's had to save Peach. (laughs) I'm just, I, I, like I said, I, it just, it all feels so stale. Mario Odyssey, I do want to give them, like, they did break the formula up a little bit. Um, and the, the, the settings and tone were also different for that game. So they're not completely sunk to it. And maybe I'm also just jaded right now because my four-year-old is obsessed with Super Mario 3D World. That is all he wants. Like, can't play Mario. Can't play Mario. Can't play Mario. And I'm like, yeah. You want to play a different one? <laughs> no, I want to play that one or the one on my phone. or or super or can I play Mario on your phone? Which is even more of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I I yeah, you know, I think the cast is still interesting. I do want to say like that. I I think the I think. They made some interesting moves there. If they did, you know, that don't seem to be, uh, you know, everything else feels very much replicated from the games. But the casting was an interesting choice, and we're getting Donkey Kong in this, right? Did, yeah. Yes, Donkey. Um, Seth Rogen's playing Donkey Seth Kong. Rogen. I'm sorry that I may have thought Chris Pratt was weird as Mario, like most people on the planet. I think I did, but Donkey Kong, I don't think could have been voiced by a more perfect voice right there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just I think that's <laughs> spot on. <laughs> who's Armison doing? Who's Will Armison doing? Or is um, he's doing. No, Sebastian Maniscalco is Foreman Spike. I forget who he's doing now. Okay, now I gotta look. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, Charlie Day is Luigi, and I think that's actually a good call. Mm-hmm. I'm um, very excited to see how he pulls yeah. off Luigi. So. If I don't see a Luigi's Mansion reference because of that, I'm gonna. 
be a little annoyed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, that is, what if this does start the Mar- the Nintendo Cinematic Universe and we get a Donkey Kong Country movie? I mean, that's... He's playing Luigi Cranky Country, Kong. Yeah. Oh, he's playing... He's Cr- playing Cranky Kong. Okay. So. Okay, so we're definitely getting touches of Donkey Kong Country. See, I guess that is, like, one thing that I may be excited about. They might be trying to start a cinematic universe with all this. Mm-hmm. That you'd spin off Donkey Kong into his own thing. Because Seth Rogen is a fairly big enough name to carry at least an animated movie on his own. So to, for him to be kind of a side character makes me think they're thinking of some things. They definitely left the, open the possibility yeah. with that. Because why would they have Cranky Kong of all... Yeah. people in a mario game it just seems a little weird and like, also if you're gonna follow the actual storyline because cranky kong was the donkey kong from the old game mm-hmm. so true yeah 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 we're gonna get that reference um but yeah i want this to be good i want to be there i you know i will also you know probably be very happy even if it's a paint by numbers very obvious where it's going kind of thing but it does mm-hmm. just still does make me a little sad that like Nintendo isn't the company anymore that would go dystopian. We need to make this a dystopian, like a- a- acid <laughs> trip of a movie. <laughs> like let's have There's a, some like the Rob Goombas are gigantic people in there. with yeah. little heads. Let's make the Goombas like eight feet tall, even though they're short. And make their yeah. heads small, but even though in the game their heads are like the only thing you see. <laughs> I Let's love flip that, that they looked like little crocodile heads. They were so tiny. Yeah. It was so weird. <laughs> yeah. It was and so Bowser weird. Bowser with his little cornrows. Dennis Hopper is <laughs> Bowser. <laughs> That's another thing. I want a live action Mario movie, and I want this cast to just do it and let me see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, and I like I I don't want like CG. I want like bad prosthet like prosthetics when we do Cranky Kong and Donkey Kong. Um, <laughs> but you know that. So real quick, check in. Like this has actually been com- becoming. You know, there we're getting kind of golden age of video game adaptations, mm-hmm. which we have not had before. Uh, I think really up in. Sonic for, movie was really the first one that I can think of that everybody was like, yeah, it was good. Ex- mm-hmm. Excuse me, sir? What? <laughs> That's the one that I know of. What other ones Let, have you actually heard someone say were good? Let's go back to a glorious time called 1995. And let me okay. remind you of what was called Mortal Kombat. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've heard multiple people tell me how they don't like that. I love those movies, but I've heard I mean, I, I'll give you the sec... Crap. I have never heard anyone t- say the the first one is crap. Now the second one, sure, Annihilation was bad, um, but good bad again. Oh. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> Annihilation yeah. just bad. <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing, and like none of the cast wanted to come back. It was like <laughs> no Annihilation. I, I will, I will not die out, but. Um, I'm getting distracted, but Mortal Kombat, like, we, for like thir- 20 years, we had a good video game adaptation, and then the Sonic movie came along, and like, to be fair, the Sonic movie did a lot of experimenting, like, yeah. the Sonic movie really did not adapt a video game itself, it it just kind of took concepts from the video game and told a good movie, and I think that was great, um, mm-hmm. it was a really different thing, um, and I hope the Mario movie does something like that, maybe. And they experiment with it, but I don't know. I don't know if... But I think that, I think what's good, at, what I'm liking, at least so far from this, is that you know, with the Sonic thing, it worked with Sonic being in our world. That kind of worked. Mm-hmm. I, I, For me, it did, you know, because... But if they did that with Mario, I don't think that would... Something like that would work. Like, a Mario running around with live-action people, I think that would look really bad. So I think well, sticking like, with this formula of a just complete animation is the best way oh, to go with Mario. I do agree because that's pretty much the same thing that the original Mario movie was. They went from the real world to the Mushroom Kingdom, but that would be the exact opposite if they yeah. do it here. Well, and yeah. I, I think Nintendo... I mean, once again, my biggest thing is Nintendo has now got very too much on. This is what Mario is, and Mario has to fit in this box. And that's kind of where I'm worried about this movie. But, I mean, they've even walked a lot. Like, they've talked about their continuities. Like, 
they don't consider Mario a plumber anymore. That's not a thing. No. Uh, they mm-hmm. Mario didn't come from this world. He's always been in the ma- in the Mushroom Kingdom. He's a he's a Mushroom Kingdom citizen. Uh, he was born there. I think it's something that they have walked in. Um, which is someone who watched the Lou Albino cartoon. I was like, no, they got, yeah. they got sucked, sucked down, down the drain. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I keep getting distracted from the, the question I want to ask, uh, <laughs> which is what video game adaptation, uh, in the past three years have you watched and really enjoyed? I would say for me, right off top, without even thinking of, without taking time to think about it, I'd say the Scorpion movie, Mortal Kombat movie. Okay, the, the Scorpion. That animated. was good. Yes. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Okay. The animated one, yeah. Dev, what about you? Well, honestly, the, I haven't really been seeing a lot of movies lately. I completely skipped Uncharted. I, I will say that. TV series are also in play, if you've watched any of the... Because both of mine are going to be TV series. Just to well, the TV series thing, I might have watched something, and I'm just not remembering. But the last video game added ad, 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 adaptation movie that I saw was Sonic Two, and that was just really good. So. It, yeah, that that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I, I was really worried there for a long time that Sonic the Hedgehog One was going to be the last movie I ever got to see in theaters, um, mm-hmm. because that was that was February of 2020, and <laughs> you know what happened next. <laughs> uh, but I have actually gone to see other movies since then now um, I think for me uh, yeah of course Castlevania um, is up oh, there yes that has been a, a fairly interesting show really good has yep. its own voice but is in very clearly like faithful to that world mm-hmm. um, and then uh, Tekken Bloodlines which is the new Netflix Tekken show uh, that just came out in his six episodes. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I've been oh, just... I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it's... I actually didn't know that was a thing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it came out. It's six episodes. It adapts Tekken Three, which is my favorite Tekken game by far, and it's the only one I know the lore for. Uh, I tried to play story mode on Seven, and I'm like, I have no idea what has happened in the last four games, um, <laughs> and just was like, ah. <laughs> Uh, why is a kuma in this <laughs> which actually is a cool thing in Tekken 7 Akuma is a real character in, in the story mode so kudos to Akuma them. from Street Fighter yeah uh, he was a guest oh, wow. yeah he's he was a guest character in the game and they but they actually it wasn't just like oh here's our guest character for arcade mode they uh, put him in the story They're, like he has a chapter in the story mode where he's trying to go after okay. like Hihachi, Hihachi or Hihachi's trying to go after him. Uh, he, it's awesome. It's it's also kind of heartbreaking because it basically was kind of them uh, showing off the idea that they had for Tekken X Street Fighter because that that was the original plan. Capcom was going to release Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and then Bandai Namco was going to release Tekken Cross Street Fighter. And Tekken Cross Street Fighter got canceled, but they took their asset from Akuma for Akuma and put it in the in Tekken Seven, and he plays so well, and he looks mm. so awesome, and it's like, oh, this game would have been awesome. It would have been way better. Don't than we have a, a a new Tekken confirmed at this point? So uh, te- te- yeah, no, no, that's uh, that was last week. Tekken Eight got confirmed. Very. Oh yeah, it was during the state of play. Okay. Yeah, very typical. Uh, Kazuya versus Jin, Kazuya and Jin Kazama. Sorry, those I get yeah. those names for just fighting each other, which is generally like every Tekken announcement trailer in some form is those two characters, father and son, fighting. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's what they do. Yeah. But we've all right. I think we've hit the new stuff for a little bit and gotten perfectly distracted and warmed ourselves up to go. Any and everywhere in this conversation. Good to be back, people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, so Sean and I had planned out in January, it's October, uh, 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 what we wanted to do when we were coming back off the holidays after the Game of the Year episodes. We just kind of wanted to talk about um, collecting and our goals for collecting in 2022 and you know what we how we were thinking about collecting these days. And, um, 
you know, clearly it's now October, so we're almost at the end of 2022. So I figured we'd kind of shift that to what we collected this year, how we went about collecting, and just the general state of collecting, and maybe talk a little bit about how we're thinking about collecting next year. So, um, Sean, let's start with yes. you. Let's start. With, let's get, let's get the question out. The biggest question out of the way. Uh, what I would, don't collect. I don't collect video games, so I don't know what I'm going to talk about. So we, we were, pay no pay no attention to this. Whole some idea. really intricate wallpaper. Then. <laughs> um, it's, it's basically like the white Wiley Coyote comes in his house and paints a video game collection, <laughs> and Sean just runs into the wall each time. I want to play PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't collect video games uh yeah no like first of yeah. all what is banger of the year what is the banger of the year that you've added to your collection and only one. i would say i know you've got i, I gotta I pick you, one i know you've gotten oh, around a lot and you've done a lot of banging uh, <laughs> hey, hey, but, I'm fun. <laughs> but what is the one banger of the year uh let's see i would say Oh. Wow, that's a good one. I might have to come back to that. <laughs> Let me think. Let me think about that one and and uh, come back because that's a hard pick. I mean, I guess, okay, I guess Chippendale's Rescue Rangers 2 okay. is probably one of the biggest ones, I would say, this year. Um which kind of can lead into my my goals yeah, go that it. were set for this year, as you mentioned, we were supposed to discuss. We never got around to, but you know, because <laughs> we talked I was I was the there time. for the journey. Yeah, <laughs> we meant to record it, but you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I I picked. I decided that um, I wanted to get back to my roots of NES collecting again. So I said, well, how can I make it fun and interesting than just going out and just buying NES games that you know random so i decided to pick four developers or publishers you know either one they do and uh complete those sets those subsets so i went with a subset collecting mentality and i picked capcom and ljn <laughs> konami slash ultra as we all know they're the same one and the same <laughs> and uh all the black box titles so I have to say that I successfully succeeded before the end of the year nice. and completed those four sets. So that was my that was my big collecting goal, uh, other than obviously the ever growing Switch collection because I have a disease. And Yo, do you think you do? <laughs> I'm up to four hundred. Oh, you see, you got me beat. <laughs> what are you, Sean? What are you up to? I I think I'm nearing the three hundred ish okay. mark. I would say maybe. Yeah. Getting close. Yeah, I'm I, I have a dedicated like shelf just for switch stuff here and yeah. it's like I'm already outgrown it and they're piled right here. So you, you guys <laughs> make over there. You guys make me feel better about my spending habits. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but actually like yeah, I I don't know what I didn't I haven't counted my switch, but like I just did a huge switch purge and traded in a lot of switch stuff. But so like all right, so why why specifically those publishers? I mean, Capcom's pretty obvious. Capcom's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, the yeah, the Capcom because it's just iconic. It, mm -hmm. It's to me when I think NES, it's like one of the first developers I think of, um, and it's got such great titles in that library. And f one thing is, I was almost there, so it didn't take much more. <laughs> <laughs> it was a few heavy hitters, yeah. but I mean, it was almost complete in my set. So I figured I would put the nail in that coffin kind of thing. So that was why I picked Capcom. Uh, LJN for kind of strange reason, oh, yeah. you know, oh, I, I, that, because they've I, gotten so much, you know, hate and heat and stuff. But they do have some great titles. Oh, yeah. I mean, and if you're the on, whole library is that horrible. If you do stuff, anything so. on YouTube. With mm. retro games, like, you're there because of, you know, some people yeah. and everyone, you know, especially Angry Video Game Nerd, has talked about LJN. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> the first subset I, I ever went for was the LJN one, just because I'm yeah. like, I want those. Like, those, those A, deserve to be treated better. Some do. I mean, it's, it's a publisher. Some are garbage. Some are actually really good. 
Yeah. Um, X Men is god awful and Ugh. an abomination. That is definitely the worst one. That is. <laughs> that is... <laughs> I that, thought it was funny when I saw that game in box get traded into the game shop that I work at. Brand new. <laughs> well, not brand new, but pretty pretty new. I <laughs> I still remember the disappointment. Like, so my friend had a Sega Genesis, and the, the X-Men game came out on that that was awesome. Like, it, you know, it was, it was very much in line with the Jim Lee and the animated series stuff. And... You know, it just played really cool, looked really cool, sounded really cool. And I'm like, oh, man, that's really cool that he has a Genesis. And then, like, I went to the video store. I'm like, there's an X-Men game on Nintendo, too. Oh, my gosh. And I, I like, and I knew enough of what, like, Pride of the X-Men was. And I'm like, oh, it kind of looks like Pride of the X-Men. Yeah. And I'm just like, I got it home, and I'm like. Expectations were here, and they quickly <laughs> went. <laughs> I was like, what? What is this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is happening? Like, it looks like, like, even then I was like, this looks like garbage and not, like, not just because it's on the Nintendo, but like, mm-hmm. yeah. And then, I mean, and, but the flip side of that is they put out a Wolverine game and the Wolverine game is actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so. And then the Konami Ultra, because, you know, just like the Capcom, it's like, come on, it's Konami. You know what I mean? Well, I, <laughs> like, yeah. A game of all time is a Konami game. Contra, come uh, on. Well, and so. one of your other big series, Metal Gear, like that's Konami. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's Konami. So, yeah, and Castlevania. I mean, come on. And so, yeah, that's that was an obvious pick. And all the turtle games, you know, and everything. So, and then uh, Black Box, the OG Nintendo releases. I mean, yeah. I mean, nothing says NES like those Black Box titles. So, yeah, it's. That's, it's kind of cool seeing all those like kind of together. Yeah, those stuff. those have a cool aesthetic. Did you do? Did, you just did cart though. You didn't do CI. Oh yeah. For those. No, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Um, yeah, I, I only have a few NES titles in box, and they're either just because, like, a couple titles because they they're actually just the same price as loose, so I might as well have bought the box, and then just titles that I care about. Yeah. I'm going for boxes. Yeah. I, I was about to say, I think the only box stuff I have is uh, because I was going for the LJN set and all the, and I, when I found a game that had been having a problem finding, all they had was boxes, so box versions. So I have Wolverine and WWF King of the Ring, mm-hmm. uh, CIB. So, but yeah, so, all right, that's, you know. That's cool, and like, yeah, that was that. I will say that I, you know, I wish we had been doing a podcast throughout the year to like check up on you on that journey. Uh, yeah, because like, as someone who's you know talks to you on a fairly regular basis, uh, it was cool to hear you and talk to you as you were going to conventions because you you pretty much did that all physical. Like, you didn't buy anything off the internet, really. Uh, a couple of them I did off off the internet. Just because there was this like, opportunity of good deal, yeah, that I couldn't pass up. But I would like, for example, the LJM one. I pretty much completed when I went to Southeast Game Exchange this year. Like I had a, a stack like this of LJM, and I was finding them like dirt cheap and getting yeah. great deals um, on those. So, nice. yeah, but the majority were in person, um, and I would probably say maybe like. Hmm. A couple of titles out of each subset I got online yes. just because uh, I saw good deals on them and took that opportunity when you, you know, you look for those opportunities when you can and not pass it up. Yeah. And, pl- and I was finding that the, for the heavy hitters, expensive ones, I was getting better deals online than I was at conventions. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a huge, always... huge <laughs> convention tax this year I've been seeing yeah. on the big pricey stuff for some reason. So. Because I, I remember I bought um, what I get. I, one of them was the the Lone Ranger, the Konami. I got that one on like Bakari, mm-hmm. and I got it for like a really good deal. And then I like went to I can't remember which convention it was, but I went to the, the next convention I went to after I got it. It was like sixty dollars more. Yeah. Than it was online. I was just like, damn, you know. <laughs> oh no, that's so glad I got it. When I, when I, you know, for yeah. what I got it for. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's a real thing. It's just kind of conventions always being, you can touch it. It's there. You know, it's there. 
But yeah, there, yeah. there's a convention tax or <clears throat> I will say too many games was much better this year compared to like when the th- the three of us went like the prices. Oh, really? Were, prices were much more in line with what I expected. Like the first year we went, I was like, this is a little high. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this year I, was... I do remember that. Like this Game Boy that I ended up buying, I'm pretty sure I remember spending like 170 or something like that because it was yeah. modded. Yeah. Wow. But, um, but yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say, like, I'm going to one this weekend, so I'm curious to see, because I've been hearing a lot about, like, prices coming down, actually, uh, on, on like, games. So I'm curious to see if there's been a difference since the last convention. To see what, And it all depends on the area, too. Yeah, I noticed that. a big difference uh, in depending on where the con is. Uh, there's that. For prices and stuff, so. We'll see. Good. I mean, so Devin, what's your what's your collecting been like this year? Uh, I mean, kind of okay, but um, haven't really doing too too much. I've mostly just been getting because of the shop that I work at now, trading in some extra stuff and getting things that I wanted back. Like mm-hmm. I ended up getting a PlayStation Vita for like the fifth time, but this is never going to leave me now. <laughs> it's the Japanese one, but I picked it up because it's red. <laughs> yeah. So, and I could finally play this because it's the only Vita game I have right now. <laughs> oh, that's that's a Vita game I've been looking to pick up. So I hear um, it's very different from the other titles. Oh, incredible! More of like a it's like a it's more like a Diablo style or something. Yes. Real yeah, quick, which if, what intrigues me. Real quick, if you're listening to this, Devin held up the Silent Hill oh. Vita game. Uh, <laughs> Just in, yeah. case, just in case you didn't get that, but and which yeah, that's that is the one game that makes me think about getting a Vita again. Uh, because but, but that's the thing: if you completely blank out of your mind that it's Silent Hill and think of it as a Diablo clone, it's okay. It's it's, it's not too too bad. It's it a, does what it needs to. It's a way forward developed Silent Hill game. Like that, I'm sold. Yes. Like to me, that mm-hmm. that goes back to like the Super Mario Brothers thing. Like. Y'all took a chance. Y'all rolled the dice and went completely the other way. I'm down. Let's see what this goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but otherwise, I was just getting random little things. Like, I also... This is probably the only physical game that I've picked up that I added to, like, my horror collection, mm-hmm. which is the Yomawari collection for the mm. Switch. Nice. Otherwise, I'm still on the road of trying to find Silent Hill Homecoming and Silent Hill Shattered Memories. I still cannot get a hold of them at all. I thought you got those. And Homecoming, no. Shattered Memories and Homecoming are the only ones that I'm missing for the complete set. Huh. The last one that I technically got was from you. You sent me to collection. So a while ago. I am closer to having the Silent Hill collection than you are. <laughs> I am now on a mission. <laughs> I must finish before you do. Hold on. I cannot someone Hold else on. me. Yeah. Right, Bye. Let me, let me get on. The, let me get on the ease base and get that Vita game. Oh. But is there a certain because isn't Shattered Memories like on the Wii, on the PSP, and the PS2, and the PS2 or something? Yeah. So is there a certain all three you're going for, or just one title? You literally just um, well, no, not all three. And you literally just made me remember that I'm missing one more: Silent Hill Origins from the PSP or PS2. I just just yeah. remembered that. Damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so here's, but here's, I want to get all Sony if I can. But, okay. okay, so I, that makes me curious because Shattered Memories. Uh, was originally a Switch game or a Wii game, so you don't. I heard that it actually ends up better on the Wii for some reason. Well, if I, it comes up. It was developed for the Wii. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. But so. my thing is, it's like if I had the PS2 hit me first, I would get that. If I had the Wii hit me first, I would get that. Okay. I mean, it's just, at this point, I'm just kind of waiting to whichever one I see. Okay. <laughs> or somebody that would actually be willing to trade for it because I'm cheap. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, let's see, I've got the, the I've got them on Xbox 360, that's why, yeah, that's why I gave you or traded you the collection for PS3, because I found the collection for Xbox 360, and I was like, hey, I'd rather just have yeah. these here. Um, mm. See, so. I had the Xbox version of Silent Hill 4, and then I finally tracked it down for 
I saw the PS2. I'm like, you know what? I'm so close anyway. I might as well just switch it out. And I finally did it. So I have the base four on PS2 or PlayStation. That, that is the game in my collection that I always think of. God, I picked you up at such the right time. Because that game was I eight, wish I did. 18 bucks when I picked it up. And yeah. I, it is see, that, it is not that anymore. <laughs> that, oh, well, are you talking about the collection? No, four. four. Oh, four. yeah. I had four back when it first came out. It was one of my favorite ones actually yeah oh dude i have a friend like one of the people that got me into retro game collecting like i listened to him go on for like two hours one time on uh silent hill 4 and how it was so uh, such a great game and such uh so um underappreciated yeah so and i am counting pt because i have that on my ps4 <laughs> <laughs> Of but otherwise, from that, I've just been getting little bits and bobs lately. Like yeah. the only other thing I got today, which was the Game Boy Micro for the very first time. Nice. So I can realize yeah. how tiny this is in my giant yeah. hands. <laughs> so out outside of Silent Hill, has there been any like targets you've been going for? Not really. No, I've been no, just, just trying to. Of... Well, I did. Uh, pretty much accidentally complete all of the. Uh, the uh, amiibos finally because i finally got the orange squid that i've been looking oh, for nice. for like 300 years nice. so yeah okay. but otherwise it's just me kind of specifically targeting the spooky stuff okay that i've been missing and keep not mm. finding you do like your spooky stuff and it is your time of year mm -hmm. so um but yeah hold on i'm just gonna look really quick to my copy of shattered memories Shh. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh... <laughs> <laughs> um as for me like i kind of was more aligned with uh what you know sean and i were kind of talking back and forth and i think i think sean and i's collecting philosophies are generally like touching and impacting each other than you know maybe sending in different directions but also kind of inspired by what the other is doing a lot of the time or at least i'm inspired by you sean i don't know if you're inspired yeah. by me i mean i am great Yes, and you're both lucky <laughs> to be friends with me. Let's just get that out of the way. Uh, but I, I, I was very, uh, you know, I come back to you once again. Uh, Siege, not this year, but last year because I wasn't at this year's, was just kind of a revelatory. There was like a period like I just felt very weird collecting video games and didn't know really how to do it, and like going to Siege and kind of having an eye, eye on something uh, after a huge purge of the collection. Um. Yeah, it really made me just like be very much more intentional about, especially retro game collecting, and just like I want to get things that even if I don't play them immediately, like I want to play them. I either had them and really missed them, or wanted to have them when I was a kid because like that was the thing I realized. Like, if you could put twelve year old me in this room, I would be freaking ecstatic to be in this room, and that's really cool. Yeah. Um. So I kind of went for heavier hitters. And autographs. I got fairly into autographs. You picked me up some autographs, Sean, which I'm deeply appreciative. Um, but I was looking. I, I set a quest list at the start of this year with some, you know, uh, one fairly light title, which I was able to get, which didn't cost much of anything. Um, 2020-22 quest list. Um, I haven't got everything on this list so far, but I've gotten most things, you know. And I... Um, you know, big things, uh, I really wanted to complete the versus games on the PlayStation one. Uh, and by that, I mean the street fighter versus, so X-Men versus street fighter on PlayStation one street Fi or Marvel superheroes versus street fighter on PlayStation one and Marvel versus Capcom. Uh, those are not the best versions of those by most people's standards, but I mm -hmm. have such a place in my heart. And the fact that they got those to run on the PS one makes my heart happy. I also have a lot of nostalgia. I remember getting Marvel vs. Street Fighter for the PlayStation. And, you know, I knew it wasn't as good as the arcade. I knew it didn't have the tag action. And I knew, like, the Sega Saturn version in Japan was better. But, like, this is what I could get. This is what I could get my hands on. And it was, it was the X-Men characters with the Street Fighter characters. And that was an awesome thing. So I was glad to get that. Uh, you know, and then on top of that, I uh, wanted to get some big ones on Dreamcast. Uh, the first big one I got this year was Street Fighter Third Strike, which is an awesome game. Uh, that is 
That is the Street Fighter Three is like the game I have come to appreciate so much more as an adult that I did not really understand or get as a kid. But now that I've like seen it, I've read things and learned things about it and how its systems work. I'm like, and then it's animation. I mean, it was always a beautifully animated game. It is to me Capcom's prettiest game. Uh, it's just such a cool, cool thing. Um, and on top of that, I wanted to also get Project Justice because I love Rival Schools. Uh, Rival Schools is one of my favorite, is another one of my favorite fighting games. Uh, and I never played Project Justice. And so I found it, uh, too many games this year, a copy of Project Justice, uh, which was really dope. And then the one I had fun getting, uh, because it was something I lucked into completely was Resident Evil 2 for the Dreamcast. Uh, back when we were having our, uh, what not heroin phase where Sean and I would be up at like three o'clock in the morning and go, I, I see you on that auction, man. I need that too. Daddy needs his yeah. medicine. <laughs> Daddy needs that. Uh, uh, but, um, I was on one and it was like disc, it was a disc only sale and they had a disc, a single disc from the, uh, Resident Evil 2 for Dreamcast, it was the Leon disc, maybe? No, it was the clear disc. They had the clear disc. And I'm like, okay, that's tw- uh, yeah, that's like a $150, $200 game. I'm like, and the clear disc by itself was like 20 bucks. And I'm like, what if I like went after this as a, like an assembling? And so I, I was like, okay, what's $20? I'll grab the clear disc. I have no idea if I'll be ever be able to find just the Leon disc. And then I popped on eBay like a week later and someone was selling just the Leon disc and it was at an auction and I got that for like 30 bucks and then found a case for it for fairly cheap. And so I just was like, ah, I have this amazing complete version of Resident Evil 2 now that is fairly rare and distinctive. So that's kind of been my vibe with collecting. I'm trying to slow down a little bit uh, because, yeah, I also, yeah, would also pick up modern stuff and I need to cut that back. Uh, though compared to you guys, my switch collection is not that impressive. So I feel good about that. Uh, uh, yeah, I can tell my wife, Hey, you think I'm bad. Let me introduce you to these guys. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And so that's kind of where, and then I also had something happen. And this is going to like be blasphemous. I know to at least one of you. Um, I really get the appeal of all digital gaming now. <laughs> um, because like I, I got a Steam Deck. Uh, that was one of the big purchases. And to go on vacation with the Steam Deck and not have to think, okay, I'm taking this game, put it in its slot. I'm taking this game, put it in its slot. And it's just all there, or it's already, you know, I was like, this is pretty damn convenient, and man, this thing does not take up a lot of room anywhere, and now that there's way more people living in this house, that's damn appealing. Uh, (laughs) uh, Yeah, not to say I won't still pick up physical games, but I'm like, oh, I like this. And actually, let let me ask you this question. I meant to ask this in the last episode. Are y'all finding with friends outside of the video game thing, which I don't know if y'all have, um, I have like a few, uh, and and coworkers. Are y'all getting like negativity for like being into physical media? Yes. Okay. Like I had a a friend of mine come over to watch a wrestling pay-per-view and he comes in my house and like looks at the wall and is like, you're really into physical media. I'm like, is it, is it everybody? Is it? And, was, and then like one of my coworkers, I was like, Oh, I just picked up this Blu-ray. They're like, boomer. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> but are y'all finding that? Is that a thing in y'all's world? Yeah. I yeah. No, I don't get it as much, but I, I, I'm a hermit. So well, I, was about to, I was about to say where you live, the internet just got there from the way, yeah. you, way you describe it. <laughs> 
Seamus came down on his with his uh, in his carriage and had some things to train. He brought us one of them internet modems. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I was on hold with Comcast, and hell had frozen over. <laughs> so, but yeah. It, so, any other thoughts on collecting this year and how it's been going? Well, I I will add that. Um... For my goals for collecting those sets and, and just pretty much any retro game at this point is that if a game is like I set a goal of like or a point of like I think it was like 50 bucks. If a game is 50 bucks or more, I have to trade, sell something, even non video game related, like something in my basement that's taken up space, sell stuff to cover at least half of the cost of that game. In other words, if a game, if a retro game costs more than a modern game, I have to make up that for at least half of it. Mm-hmm. And, and how I've been going now is that I've been paying all, just about a hundred percent, like, like all the bangers, all the, like the chip and Dale's too. I sold stuff to yeah. pay for that. So it didn't come out of my pocket at all in the sense of, except for the stuff I bought that I ended up yeah. selling, Yeah. but it's no additional cost, in other words, and it's shrinking down, the 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 fluff you know yeah. you know what i mean like the stuff that i don't need and, and don't wire it's, it's just taking up space yeah so yeah. I, I i highly recommend that to anybody if you're if you can get past that first we've always talked about those phases that first phase of i gotta collect them all kind of of collecting yeah. and then you get into that next phase of like you know what i don't really need it all i just need this yeah. you know then that's exactly take, what i yeah you know just yeah. take that stuff you don't need and get this just what you want and yeah. stuff that makes you happy because in the end of the day so we got the time <laughs> to yeah. do. you're not gonna play a million games in your life so pick, choose your time wisely yeah. in a sense you know what i mean that's exactly what i did when i went to too many games when i met you guys i brought the last of my wii u collection because i wanted to devote it yeah. to the things i like the spooky stuff up here which worked i ended up getting silent hill one that day and mm-hmm. a few other things that added to this yeah. cord so definitely yeah. helped yeah and that's i definitely am i'm not as well on that train as you are you're far better at that than me in setting that rule uh but when i went to two mini games this year and, and got my project justice like a, that what was preceded that was like selling my PSVR and a bunch of games I just didn't want anymore. And that selling that allowed me to get project justice and mega man on the game gear, which was a, uh, rarity game that I had always wanted to try. So yeah, getting the collection down and then like channeling it towards stuff you really want versus the kind of grab approach, which once again, like is, yeah, I'm so thankful that, like, for Video Games Monthly, like, I, who, like, is what got me onto YouTube, uh, but, like, they've done that special box for me now that I'm just getting, I'm just getting one game, and generally, if it's a game I don't want, it's even easy, like, it, it, it's easier to get rid of that one game and get, like, a significant value out of it, mm-hmm. uh, versus, like, you know, no one's gonna give me much for this Tonka adventure yeah. game boy game boy advance game so <laughs> uh, and working at that shop that i started working at um as my little side project has definitely helped me on that too because i've gotten rid of like probably 95 percent of the fluff nonsense so pretty much everything behind me is something that i want to play or ha- will play in the future so yeah, yeah. and so yeah, we're about to come up on a new year. Any thoughts for what you might be collecting or what you might be shooting for in 2023, which is painful to say because I graduated in 03 of high school. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I graduated in 04, so <laughs> I grad I graduated in 98. I got you. <laughs> yes, yes, Sean. We 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 get that like Seamus also took you to school in the carriage. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm the old man yelling at clouds. <laughs> um, for this year, wow, you know, I haven't had a chance to really give it much thought. I mean, I think I, I was going to probably continue down the same thing I was doing with the subsetting, 
So I kind of started looking at some, maybe some other develop, well, unknown, lesser known developers mm -hmm. and kind of and finishing some of those off. But I don't know. I got to kind of sit down and kind of reevaluate. I think, I think that's, this is the time of, for the year to like kind of do that. Yeah. I think is it like we're doing now reassessing what we did this year. Was it success? Did it, did it achieve mentally, physically, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, in a better state? Yeah. So do we want, or do we need to change it up uh, yeah. to better, to make ourselves feel better or, you know, because, you know, collecting is fun, but it can be a, a mental and uh, addictive drain oh, and, yeah. on, on you. So taking a time to step back and evaluate what you did and, and what you're doing, if it's healthy or right course to do. So that's yeah. my two cents. So at this point, I think I'm just going to continue in the in the sub setting unless I determine that maybe I'll do something else. What, what's a subset you think you might go for this year? Uh, I was thinking Data East okay. on the NES, um, and that was one. And then uh, that's the only one that comes to mind. I'd have to look at my list. Mm -hmm. There's some other random ones I picked out. It's it's kind of funny because a couple of them I looked at, and I was like, oh, there's only like three titles. Like they only made uh, – oh, Milton Bradley. That's one. Oh yeah. There's a, a few uh those Milton Bradley. They had those cool those distinctive logo uh yeah. labels rather that um you know it's kind of like that gray border. Yeah. The, the, uh, oh, I remember like so. Time Lord and Yeah. Yeah. Cuz I think I'm pretty close with some of those. And then yeah. and going through those some of them like I realized it's like wow, you know what? So, some of these games are pretty pricey that you didn't wouldn't expect. Yeah. It's like it's kind of a shocking eye-opening thing. So yeah, um, yeah, Milton Bradley, Data East. Uh, if you can think of any, let me know. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but those two mm -hmm. definitely come to mind. And then I was thinking of just like like a sub like a subset within a subset, like like um, like I have all the Turtle games, mm -hmm. of course, because Konami and stuff. But that's like a subset of its own, like all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games. Yeah. So something like the RoboCop games. Like I only have the yeah. first RoboCop. So RoboCop 2 and 3, get those in the NES, have all the RoboCop. Yeah. Things like that. Okay. Just kind of set some little goals like that. That's pretty cool. Devin, what about you? Kind of keeping on, keeping um, on, keeping it spooky? Yeah, well, basically. Well, my collecting goal for like the last couple of years now is to complete that. And it just keeps eluding me every time. Mainly because I'm not, I don't, the only one that I've spent the most on right now is silent hill one and that was just because it was right there and i'm like i just sold all that other stuff yeah. I was like, screw it i'm gonna do it um i've been trying to get them as cheap as i possibly can yeah. or oh, through yeah. trades but it's uh what since i've been working at this shop the last month or two it's mainly the goal that i want to work on is to figure out how to solder and to get better at either modding or tinkering with these old consoles, like fixing them and stuff. I've been doing a lot of it lately. Like I fixed multiple NESs, multiple PS2 controllers and a Wii so far. Nice. But it was like minor stuff. I want to learn how to get better yeah. at it. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. I've done some very minor, I modded my like NES to uh, make it where you, well, I put the no blink win thing in it, which makes it PAL friendly and a couple of other things. But yeah. modding's cool. Uh, your uh, eight bit is really good at modding and stuff, which we talked about earlier. I'm gonna, I've got a Game Boy and Game Boy Pocket back there that's gonna get glitched out. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I guess for me. Yeah, I've got to be in the same place just thinking, and I, I, yeah, I bet you hit, like, a really good thing. Like, there I, there have been times, I think, even for, for myself, like, collecting has gotten to an unhealthy place. Not, like, put me in debt. Like, I'm, I'm, you know, not in debt or anything, but, mm. you know, probably should have better savings than I do. And, you know, why, why gr you know, grabbing all that, what was it doing? What was that, what, like, what was I what was it like doing for me that I had to go that route? Um, so always kind of, now I'm kind of much more mindful of, you know, now it's much more like, Hey, 
I really like that series, and I never tried that game before, and I'm going to sell some things, and now I'm going to spend that money on it. Um, so, yeah, but just always keeping that in check, and I think it's always kind of a walking it. Because I think, like, game collecting can get addictive. Like, mm. it, it not like, like in a sense, like, you are doing something unhealthy for yourself. Because you're just trying to, like, chase that uh, serotonin. I think that's the good chemical in your yeah. brain. Uh, which you get, like, for something like that. Um, but, yeah, there's uh, a couple things on the 2022 list I didn't get. I would love to get a Sega Saturn copy of Resident Evil. Um, maybe do some more Saturn collecting this year, because I love the Saturn. Um, but, yeah, so I guess that's going to do it. Uh, before we go, before we get out of here, of course, I will put links for these two wonderful people and what they do. Uh, down in the <clears throat> description, you can check out their stuff. But 8-Bit, where can people find you? Uh, obviously, <clears throat> on YouTube is my uh, biggest social media, I guess, if you want to call it that, outlet. Um, that 8-Bit Glitch 79, all one word. Uh, but I am on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, all those things. So check it out. If you like uh, unboxings and retro video games and Oh that goodness. I just did an unboxing of a cool collection I got. Uh the Turrican Collector's Edition. It was strictly limited. It's a very awesome set. So check that out. And uh yeah, that's pretty much it. Rat Boy, where can people find you? So at the moment, I, I still have Rat Boy Collectibles on YouTube. Haven't really used it yet, but I will be jumping on it again soon. But my main thing is Rat Boy Collectibles on TikTok. Check him out there. He's got some cool stuff. Um, and, of course, I'm here at Bandana Gamer. <laughs> uh, hopefully I will be cranking out some more content, getting into more of a even thing. I've got some unboxings, got some stuff coming from Limited Run. I've got a, two or three VGM boxes I need to get through. Uh, so I'll be hopefully doing that uh, sometime very, very soon. And so, yeah, that'll do it. So I hope... Y'all enjoyed what you hear. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and give us a subscribe if you haven't already. And we will catch y'all in the next one, my friends. Peace. Bye.